All right, guys, I cannot believe I finally get to do this, but we are at the point now where you're gonna learn a lot more about my life <laughs> and the things that I do that don't involve splitting wood. Although, obviously, I'm not gonna stop working. <laughs> we'll still get a lot of that. We are in my childhood stomping grounds here in Northern California. Probably not the most aesthetic shot since I'm just where I parked, but <laughs> today I'm gonna be taking you guys to a swimming hole. Now here in Northern California, we've been hammered and hit hard, hard all winter with a crazy amount of water. But today I'm taking us to a spring fret, a spring fed swimming hole. And we get to enjoy kind of the uniqueness that is the area that I live in and why I choose to live here in the Sierra Nevada mountains and why I still believe in my heart, I'm biased, but why I believe in my heart, it's the best place in the world for being able to do all the little things you want, the outdoor lifestyle, without having to live somewhere like, you know, Boulder or Denver, Colorado, where you're just surrounded by people the whole time. So it's very rural where I live. I have tons of places like this. I can take you guys to hundreds of them. We still have a lot to do today, but I didn't want to start my day without spending some time outside. That's exactly what we're going to do. Let's go. that bubbly shiny look that will definitely ruin <laughs> it's not gonna be fun so keep an eye out that's what it looks like don't touch it it's not even cold so amazing so this is probably my favorite swimming hole on this hike. Like I told you guys, this is spring. It's not like, a, it's not a legit river. This is just kind of a creek. So you don't get the overflow that we're getting right now in California. So that's why it's the perfect time to come. It's pretty temperate water. It's not very cold. But I mean, come look at that. We're gonna go check it out. We gotta do some cliff jumping, obviously. Um, I don't know how loose and wild I'm going to get today because I don't have anyone with me, uh, any of my buddies with me to help me if something went wrong, but not to think morbidly, but you got to be careful. I'm not going to get too wild. I'll show you guys some of my more extreme cliff diving stuff some other time. Today we're going to keep it responsible, but we're still going to hit this. Let's go do some jumping. Here we go. back home guys I promised myself <laughs> after this awesome day and this awesome trip that I wouldn't turn this into a preachy video um, it turns out I might actually do that I'm gonna try to keep it short and then I'm gonna show you guys a glute exercise that I have been loving lately I will explain it to you so you can put it into your routine um, but in the meantime let me just break into this real quick today I had a realization that I have not been sharing totally sharing my ideas sort of philosophies with YouTube in the way that I had planned so far, and this is a great way to break into it. For years and years, I was sharing this, these thoughts, these ideas, these feelings with a small knit community, which is just my immediate family and friends. But here's a message that I think is underappreciated and not talked about enough. We are in a current state in the fitness industry where there's a lot of people on all these levels of extremes who the gym is life, they spend multiple hours in the gym a day and then multiple hours on just planning and talking about and buying clothes for it and taking pictures for it and also then making all their content for it and then making their job about it. And I get it. I have a master's degree in exercise. I literally make my living on fitness. Am I really one to talk? Yes. Here's why. My free time, the things I like to do with my activity, with my moving legs, with my beating heart is not all about inside four walls, the gym. Fitness, the word fitness, from a biological standpoint, does not mean abs, it does not mean biceps, it does not mean musculature that re represents someone who looks 
lean and good on the beach. Fitness means you are fit for the environment in which you're living. Um, really when you break down to it, the best way to be shaped and built and healthy is to be able to do the things you love to do. And that should encompass much more than just working out in a building. You should be able to go explore, do the things you love, um, be flexible with food around you every once in a while, be able to go for walks, swim in the ocean, um, explore, hike, get into activities and new hobbies and not struggle with it because you're not in good enough uh, metabolic health. This is what fitness, that's what fitness means. You should be able to live the life that you're enjoying or wanting to enjoy and that's what it should be about. Now the gym is beautiful. I love the idea of being able to shape a body. It's so fascinating to be able to shape your body the way you'd like to look. But that's a very small representation of what the entire graph of your life, this pie chart of what your life should look like. Today, I went swimming. I explored on the river. I hiked for probably three and a half kind of vigorous miles. Uh, had a lot of fun, ate some beef jerky, a banana, came home, and then got back to my normal life. That's what every day of our lives used to look like before this corporate sedentary lifestyle. So what I urge more people to do is, is try not to get swept up into this all or nothing mentality that we see in the fitness space. And remember, all of your activities should not just exist for the gym and in a gym. There should be hobbies, fun, exploration. On those days when I do those things, I burn way more calories and it's way more sustainable because I'm not plugging away on a fucking treadmill, looking down at the clock, watching valuable minutes of my day go by if I'm lucky enough to be able to go out and explore. It's easier, it's more fun, and honestly, the treadmill and that kind of activity should be a supplement, not a replacement. You should still go out and have fun and you should assess for sure if you're, all your activity is only taking place in an organized gym setting, it might be time to reassess um, the way you're looking at how you're getting all your activity in. And I mean that with the utmost respect. You guys know I've made my living in the world of fitness. I'm trying to preach balance, but I'm trying to preach a lifestyle where people will look back on the last 10 years and not just have a bunch of selfies from a corporate gym. They'll actually have memories and fun exploration activities that they did, picked up some new hobbies, learned some new skills. That's the kind of shit you want to look back on in your life. Um, and I'm afraid a lot of people who are getting too deep into this like tunnel vision of fitness are missing out on that. You know what I mean? So I've been there, I was in my 20s and I thought I wanted to look like a bodybuilder and then I fell out of taste. I didn't have the same taste for that look anymore and now I'm very grateful that I didn't go extreme with anything and never took any drugs to try to push it because now I'm very happy for what my body is capable of, what I'm able to do and the fun shit I've done with the last 10 years and then hopefully the next 10 years. So that's my lesson in health. Find a balance in between the two worlds and don't overdo it. Um, don't overdo it with the gym goals. We're here to get goals. I mean, I like to think that I'm pretty proud of the body that I've built, but I still do a lot of fun shit outside all the time. So you want both, you want both. Keep that in mind and remember how much, it, one of the coolest things is to see how many calories you burn on an exploring day, on a hiking day, on a swimming day, something like that, on a kayaking, gardening, whatever. How many calories you burn and you don't get absolutely bored to death looking at a you know, number on a treadmill the whole time. Even walking your dogs is a great replacement. So just think about that. Um, I think it's a great, valuable message. Now I'm gonna leave you guys with this last thing and it is a tip for my favorite glute exercise right now and I wanna explain it well and make sure that I get it on camera for once so we can kinda of see how I like to do it. So now this is gonna be sort of an awkward angle here but this is the best way to kinda of get a good perspective of what this exercise looks like. Now, most of you have done RDLs, most of you have done um, split squats, most of you have done variations of those exercises. This is a beautiful exercise for the glutes, but I'll tell you why it works so well. The glute muscle is not, like most muscles have this very linear nature where like the bicep, for example, inserts and attaches in this very linear nature. So it's pretty clear that it is for this one angular contraction. Whereas the glute muscle back here if we look on a chart, maybe I can put one right here for a second. 
you'll notice that the glute fibers are not perfectly straight. It is not exactly clear what exact direction they're gonna contract in. Because they're so like creatively designed, um, they have almost like this feathered kind of wraparound design. They don't contract, the, the glute maximus anyway, does not contract in this perfectly straight line. So we are not getting a perfect contraction and stretch when we just do super linear exercises. Now they're not imperfect. You still get great stuff from those exercises, but this one, you get a little bit of both and are using more of the glute maximus in the stretch position and getting more of a kind of an adequate angle out of it. So let me show you before I talk your, talk your ear off. We're gonna stabilize on any sort, you could use a squat rack, you're just gonna, we're gonna stabilize on any sort of bar on one side. Hold a heavy weight, this is 100 pounds, we're gonna hold a heavier weight on this leg that is gonna go up. And what we're gonna do is hinge back like you would with an RDL and reach down and in, inside, and then you're gonna come up and squeeze straight here. Notice how I have a little bit of rotation when my leg goes back, hinge, I'm stretching, oh, I can feel it in the glute, stretching, 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 come back up, squeeze down the middle, reach to the middle here, to the instep of the foot, up again, squeeze as you hinge. Now I'm calling this a glute reach in my programming, in my app Dose. I'll link my app um, right here in the description, but for those of you who are not members or don't want to subscribe to my fitness app, no big deal, I still appreciate your support. I have been calling this the glute reach. It's very similar to an RDL. Remember, this is what it'll look like. Let me get the weight out of the way. Foot planted down, body rotated this way. We are going to reach, 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 and then contract back up to the middle. So you notice this angle where I'm kind of coming across and inward and then squeezing back and outward. That is currently my favorite glute exercise. You can load it up. You should use a wrist wrap, wrist strap, whatever you want to call them, so that your grip isn't going to fail first. Use a heavy dumbbell, and then you can even elevate your foot by putting like a thick 45 pound plate or something on the floor and reaching past that to get a deficit movement. But I'm loving it. It's been a regular part of my programming for about a year now. Noticed some great improvement in my glute development. So I think you guys will really enjoy that movement. I hope you do. And for those of you who have stayed through this whole video, thank you for your patience. Go ahead and drop um, any ideas you have for videos you would like to see in the comments. I've got plenty more stuff on the way, plenty more ideas, but I love to hear what you guys are enjoying. So we'll talk soon.